There are some times where I think I know exactly what God is up to. And then there's other times where I just have no clue. It's usually the latter. What's up y'all, it's Rachel Elizabeth and you're watching Real Talk with Rach, where we talk about real things because it's the real, honest, vulnerable, hard things that get us deeper in relationship with others and deeper in intimacy with God. And today is no different. I have some very real, very vulnerable things to share with you. And I wanna start by segueing from the intro a little bit by asking you a question. Has God ever revealed something to you that was going to happen in the future? Or maybe not so specifically, maybe he's given you a dream or a vision of some general subject matter as a warning for something to come to prepare your heart. And he does it in love. He's not doing it for any other reason than love. Or maybe he's led you to a passage of scripture that doesn't quite make sense, but you know it was him who led you there. Not too long later, you realize that he was writing these passages on your heart to prepare you for what was about to come. I'm curious to see how many of you have actually had experiences like that, so please, if you have, tell me in the comments below. I definitely have. There was a time at the beginning of the year where God warned me about a storm that I was going to walk through and it came and went and I was so grateful for that warning because I don't think I would have handled it nearly as well had I not gotten that warning from him. Likewise, I had another dream recently that I didn't understand, but it is slowly piecing together and I have a much better understanding of what that was about. And I believe that that was also a warning for something that was yet to come and maybe is still coming. Again, just to reiterate, when God warns us of things to come, it's in love to prepare us to stand firm and remind us that he is God. In every circumstance, he is sovereign. He's still on the throne. He's in control and you are in his hands. It's all love. There are no warnings from God that are meant to instill fear in us. In fact, any fear that has to do with punishment or pain is not from God. So any warning you get from him is a loving father's way of letting you know, hey, something's gonna happen and it's not gonna be super easy, but I'm here and you are with me and I am with you and no one can snatch you out of my hand and I'll take care of everything. That said, God's also done this for me with his words, the way he speaks softly to our hearts when we're listening for him. And it didn't make sense at the time. What he said was, you have done nothing wrong. And it threw me off, but then that same day, I got a message that could have been used by the enemy to completely deflate me, discourage me, and maybe even knock me off course a little bit. But I remembered that word he'd whispered to me that morning and I relaxed. That thing didn't have the power over me that it could have had because my father was leading me and he knows what's coming because he's outside of time and he is God. So rest assured, nothing happens that he isn't aware of. And while it's not his will that you hurt or you're in pain or you experience loss or sickness or death or any other trauma, he will use everything to lead you into deeper intimacy with him, to grow you up and transform you into the image of his perfect son, Jesus and to remind you that he is God and that he loves you and he will carry you all the way through. And he's also done this for me in the form of giving me a scripture or leading me to a book in the Bible that has to do with something that I'm about to go through, that I'm about to walk through in the not too distant future. And this is what brings me to today's share, the most recent way he's done this. Last week, he put the book of First Peter on my heart. I thought that what I learned from it and shared in last week's vlog was the reason he brought me to this book. But I do remember thinking it's strange that he led me to the book about victory and suffering. That's the premise of 1 Peter. So that thought came and went. But after last week's vlog, I decided to keep studying 1 Peter. I don't know about you, but there are a lot of times where I'll study scripture and a verse will stand out that doesn't make sense at the time, but it'll be powerful and I'll make a note of it. And that's what happened. I finished reading 1 Peter last week. But then over the weekend, I was surprised by a conversation with Jacob, my boyfriend, that led to a very honest confession and a breakup. The confession was that for some time, Holy Spirit had been putting on his heart that he needed to dive into some deep healing from some stuff in his past and the divorce and stuff he hadn't really faced head on yet. 
And that's all I'll share about that. But I can tell you that my spirit rejoiced in that truth because I had felt that there was something that wasn't being dealt with for quite some time. And yet I did not see a breakup coming because I believed that whatever it was, we could walk through it together because God had made it so clear that coming up to Victoria and being in this relationship was the right thing to do. From day one, our relationship has been saturated with grace and mercy. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. God has used it for such wonderful things. I'm really marveling at the fact that God uses everything for good, even really, really hard things. And the thing is that I've learned so much about how to love in new ways, how to love sacrificially in relationship when it's really hard. And God has redeemed so much for me through this relationship too. So I don't know what the future holds and I have no idea what this process is gonna look like or if I'll even stay in Canada, but God is still good and he's still on the throne and Jacob and I are both in his hands and I still trust him even when I don't understand. And the passage that stood out to me last week that I know a lot of you will be able to relate to too and be comforted by, hopefully like I was and like I have been even today still. First Peter chapter two, verse four. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. And all of that is so beautiful, but I want to focus on verse four that stood out like it was highlighted before this weekend. And that was that Jesus was rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. But so were you. So are we. And after this breakup, this passage was such a comfort to me. And I reread it this morning because y'all, I don't need pity. And I definitely don't need any comments about this relationship right now. <laughs> But I have been rejected countless times. And in the past, rejection has been the lie the enemy has used to tell me that I am not worth the blood of Christ, that I am not as valuable as he says that I am. But that is a lie. And that goes for you too. If you've ever experienced rejection, then you have something in common with Jesus. In fact, I think you have a lot of things in common with Jesus. So we, when we know our value and we know the truth, we can stand up against that lie of the enemy and say, you know what? I was made in Christ's image. He is in me, I am in him. And he was rejected by men, but he was chosen by God and precious to God. And I may be rejected by men. In fact, it's a promise that in this world, we will have trouble, but we need to take heart because Jesus has overcome the world. And we have overcome the world because we're in him. In him, we are also chosen and precious to God. So we, through this truth, in this truth, can handle every rejection by men, any rejection by men, because we are chosen and we are precious to God. That's something to meditate on, to marinate in. Let that saturate your heart. You are chosen by God and you are precious to him. So if you were rejected once, or you've been rejected a million times, or if you'll be rejected, this is for you. This is for us. We're in this together. And for my ladies out there, being 35 and trusting God with your singleness is a lot easier when you know this truth. When you have chosen to chase Jesus and deepen your intimacy with him through raw vulnerability with your father, when you take the time to get to know him in relationship and you let him see all of you by you choosing to show it to him, even though he's God and he already knows it, you are fully known and you are fully loved. But in relationship with him, it is so beautiful. There is fullness of joy in his presence. And I promise you, no matter what the future looks like. I know and I can tell you that God has really good plans for you. No matter what you've endured, no matter what you will have to endure, it's going to be worth it. Jesus is worth it. No matter what, relationship with him is worth it. Intimacy with him is worth every vulnerability, every hardship, every trial. Your faith is just being strengthened. Let go again, trust him again, keep walking it out, and remember that whoever trusts him will never be put to shame. It's the truth, y'all. Will you believe it? Thanks for being so understanding. The journey's not over yet. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Share it with a friend that needs it. 
If you'd like to support this ministry in any way, you can become part of my Patreon family or simply donate using the links in the description box below or the links in my Instagram bio. I love you and praying for you. I'll see you next time.